Hey, how's it going, YouTube? This is Matty S of the Stone Family, and no, your eyes are not deceiving you. This is Lonely Her Hermit's channel, if I could speak. Lonely Hermit's mm -hmm. channel. And uh, I am interviewing him for his first interview in the Elite Battle League Season 2 uh, preseason interview. And I'm going to ask you right now. I guess it's the first question, too. How are you doing today, bud? <laughs> I'm doing pretty good today. I had quite a bit of schoolwork, but thankful I was able to get through it pretty quick. Uh, so now I get to relax and record for a while and have some fun today. So, so far, so good. How are you doing? I am do I'm doing fantastic. I am excited for these interviews. And just to throw it out there real quick, not to do a long spiel. But I'm doing half the interviews, he's doing the other half, and we figured the best way to split it up was we're going to do our own divisions, and we're going to do each other's interviews. Yep. So His it, idea. Pretty smart. <laughs> <laughs> I think both of us have had really good ideas for the EBL, so I think we're, we're the idea guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, if you want, we can jump right into it, unless you've got something you want to say to your viewers real quick. Uh... I have fun with the interview. <laughs> All right. And make sure y'all leave a like on this video. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Thank you. <laughs> All right. I'm going to jump into the questions. With us inching ever closer to the start of the season, what is going on in your head? Uh, Well, first of all, those are the questions for the returning competitors. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I scrolled down and it didn't scroll down. All right. okay. <laughs> let's jump into it with these questions what made you want to join the league for season two i apologize uh it's okay um well uh, i originally had gotten an invite for season one but in all in all honesty i was not ready for that i was not mentally ready for it uh, but at the same time i've always like even back when i was first starting to watch youtube i, I started watching like the wbe i forget the other league that the bigger poketubers had uh, but I used to watch those all the time. I liked watching battle leagues um, and then to a certain degree I kind of felt bad about not joining because it was very last second um, but and, and I wanted to help out so obviously I got involved in season one with like the weekly roundups and stuff like that um, and then you know just watching the battles how fun they were how entertaining the league was how everyone started to you know build like these strong bonds with each other uh, I was just like, yeah, I definitely want to hop in for season three, which I made that decision like, I think before season one even started. Yeah, it I was, was like, yeah, was way we'll, we'll early. Jump into season two. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, I, I, it was just season one especially like solidified that decision. Um, it just was so much fun to watch, and I was like, I need, I need to jump in, even if I lose all my matches, I don't care. It just looks like so much fun just to be in. So I was like, yeah, I absolutely need to join. Yeah, that, that's awesome, and we are happy to have you here, like, truly. Alright, so we're gonna hop to the next question. I don't know how to uh, roll to the next question, so I'm probably gonna say we're gonna hop to the next question a lot. Y'all just prepare for that. <laughs> uh, what's the origin of your team's name? Um, well, I love LA, Los Angeles. I love going there. It's one of my favorite places. I love the skyline. I love just being in downtown or going to watch a game or just whatever. I, I love LA. Um, it's one of my favorite places to go to. Um, so I, I had to, I think I had to go with LA. Plus, like around me, there's no like notable areas aside from LA. That's like the closest area that if you say it, people will know it. You know, so I was like, okay, let's go with LA. But then I was like, is it like LA in for napes? That kind of sounds weird. I was like, but well, what if I came up with a name that didn't really have a Pokemon? Um, and so that way, maybe in the future, I could, you know, if I wanted to change the Pokemon, I could. Um, so I just, I don't know, LA Inferno just kind of rolled off the tongue. Um, and I was just like, I think it, I think it sounds good. Um, and I was able to work really well with the logo and all that good stuff. So. Uh, it was just it just kind of rolled off the tongue at the time and I, I didn't really want to have a pokemon as my name just so maybe like i said in the future i could put a different pokemon if i wanted to or something so i just decided to roll with the la inferno uh and that's just yeah that's kind of where it came from i do like the idea of being able to switch the pokemon that, that's a great idea did you come up with your team's name and or did coming up with your team's name and getting your logo made you more excited to participate this season? Yeah, that was the first step. <laughs> I did my logo <laughs> before season one 
started um i you know as the season went on i was still touching it up and stuff but um i mean i think i showed it to you like way back too um yeah it was like I, it was like week one yeah <laughs> i had it ready for a long time and definitely and like i said alongside watching the battles and stuff but the the logo and stuff too, i was like I, I made it i'm gonna use it at that point i was like there's no point in me making this logo and not using it i was like that's just kind of dumb so <laughs> i was like yeah I, I making the logo and all that definitely got me more excited and definitely made sure that i was going to be um, participating in the next season and now that i have scrolled to the right part of the text with us, us inching ever closer to the start of the season what's going through your head we'll jump back to that question now <laughs> uh uh nerves definitely um we're we're about uh as a recording this video will be what like one week away or so something uh a um, week and a half well, depending yeah. on when you battle your opponent true yeah um i i'm of course i have foos round one which is uh probably one of the harder battles i could have gotten right away um but i mean i've been kind of you know sort of practicing with my team it's not 100 percent ready yet but they're getting closer and closer to being done um like last night a little story for you guys i literally battled my my brother carlos for like i battled like five or six times against his championship team from the the regular game and playing with my team i, I was starting to feel a lot more comfortable so uh the nerves did kind of go away a little bit with doing those battles as I, i'm starting to understand my team more and more uh, just kind of practicing here and there with them. So I Nervous yes, but I'm also very very excited to get into it um, and uh, I, I'm so scared of this <laughs> yeah. Last season Foos had the great wall of uh, What'd you call it the great wall the great wall of Everglade Everglade So I wonder if this season because he's got some bulky marns. He might still mm -hmm. have that great wall up <laughs> <laughs> and uh how are your preparations going so far? I know you just explained the battles with your brother. Any other preparations? Um, right now, it's just making sure my team's ready. Um, and even then, I've also been kind of holding on to some backups in case I ever want to switch up the EVs or anything like that. So um, it's just been doing a lot of that. And honestly, those were my first test battles I've done. So definitely in this week, <laughs> I need to start start practicing a bit more with them and again just just start to fill out my team more and uh but so far preparations aren't probably aren't exactly where they need to be but um we're getting somewhere i think is the best thing i can say because i'm definitely getting somewhere with the, with the preparations i will throw out some advice here just a little bit uh battling with the team you do get more comfortable with what the team can do so definitely i recommend doing that if you have time <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, do you have any specific goals for this season? Anything that you would like to accomplish? My one goal is just to make the playoffs. Because um, obviously two teams can miss out this season. And my goal is to not be one of those two teams. That's it. I don't like, obviously, I think everyone's got the same goal win the championship, win it all. But at the end of the day, I also kind of got to be a little realistic. And let's start sort of. Well, my short-sighted goal is to win week one um, and get off to a good start to the season, honestly. Whether it's a 6-5 or 6-0, it doesn't matter to me. I just I want to win week one um, just to get those nerves out the way, just to, like I said, get to a good start to the season. Then, like, my medium-term goal is to just make the playoffs. Um, I guess maybe that's long-term. I'm not really sure, but it's playoffs. Um, just don't miss out. That's it. Just come fourth in the division. Even if I have a one and four record, if that means I'm fourth, you know what? I made the playoffs. That's the goal right now is just <laughs> make the playoffs. Um, and if we, you know, if we do make the playoffs, try and make a run. Um, that's the long term goal is to win the championship, obviously. At least get to the championship match. That'd be amazing. Um, but the yeah, short term, win week one, medium term, make the playoffs, long term, just make the championship match. Um, so that's 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 what I'm gonna be shooting for this season. Hey, just do what Foos did last year. Come into the playoffs, the underdog, and knock off one of the top teams. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, looking at uh, the team that you drafted, uh, how do you how do you think your draft went? And did you have any plan heading into the draft? Obviously, you don't have to be too specific. Um, my plan was uh, a sand team. 
uh, definitely. I was debating what, what kind of team I wanted to run, and I decided on a weather team. Uh, and my two options were actually sand and drought. But thankfully, I didn't go drought because Foos took one of the drought mods like right away. So that would have sucked. But <laughs> I decided to go to sand. Um, and the draft actually changed quite a bit. So uh, I will say that uh, it, I had to adjust. Um, but through those adjustments, I was able to come up with honestly probably a better team than what, uh, what I was originally planning. I mean, I was not even planning to get Dracovish. I was not planning to get Corviknight. I thought those two were gonna be gone earlier than when I got them. Um, I was not really planning around like um, Mama Swine at first. I wasn't really planning on Leafeon at first, uh, but ultimately like grabbing them up and putting them on the team, especially like Dracovish was one that I really was not expecting to fall to round five, which is when I got it. Um, and having it on the team is a surprise addition but a welcome addition because it's just a good pokemon it's a great pokemon um and it fits the team well so yeah my plan was kind of derailed a little bit but in a good way to where i was able to adjust and kind of i was able to see the other options because i feel like if i had gotten all my picks that i wanted i probably wouldn't have seen some of the options that were still on the table because it kind of clicked in my head randomly i was like wait dracovish is still on the field wait corvinite still on the field like i'm scooping these guys up they're gonna help the team so i it, it to a certain degree my plan was kind of went off off track but because it went off track it honestly kind of got better in a certain way because i was able to adjust and i had to had to pick different pokemon so you kind of answered the next question. Did you have any picks stolen through the draft? You didn't exactly say you did, but if you did, were you able to adjust to the changes? Uh, yeah, thanks for taking Excadrill. <laughs> um, <laughs> that was the one pick that honestly changed my whole draft. Um, I was waiting for you to say that, by the yeah. way. <laughs> <laughs> that was the one pick that changed my whole draft because again, when Excadrill got taken, my plan changed and I had to adjust. I had to pick a different lead attacker. I had to try and adjust, but like I said, uh, I was able to adjust in a, in a better way, to be honest, because like I said, because I didn't get Excadrill, I actually pushed Rotom Heat up. I was originally gonna take Rotom Heat late, like seventh, eighth round, but I actually took it fourth. And then because I took it then, it bounced, came, uh, it bounced back to me in the draft and I saw Dracovish was still on the field. So I was like, let me take Dracovish. And it bounced back to me again. And I saw Corviknight still on the field. So it helped me see different options that I wasn't even paying attention to and arguably probably could have made my team better than what I was originally planning. So it sucked because it would have been nice to have Excadrill, but at the same time, I feel like it did help my team. Um, to get some more coverage and to get some mods that 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 benefit the team and actually fit the team really well um, And I'm you know, I'm super excited to get to know my team better. Uh, but yeah, Excadrill. Poor Excadrill. <laughs> hey, I'm just saying Ex Excadrill is a pretty good mod. <laughs> <laughs> I know <laughs> How are you how do you feel about your team that you were able to that you were able to draft now that they've been selected? Really good like I said, after doing the, the practice matches, um, I've, I've, I'm starting to feel more comfortable. I'm starting to feel like the nerves kind of go away a bit because I, I I don't know. I like to say I don't know battling, but I know more than I than I really um, think, uh, than I really believe in myself. Um, for better or for worse, I know I, I do know more stuff than I than I think. Um, and it always kind of happens when I get into a battle. I just start making plays out of nowhere, and I'm like, where did that, where did that come from? Where did that prediction come from? <laughs> um, but I, my team, I like I said, the battles just made me feel really comfortable with them, and and made me help me further see that uh, that the new picks that I was able to bring in were were definitely going to benefit the team, and definitely going to help me, you know, find some success this season. To be honest, I. I'm very excited to really get to start using my team and really, really get into the thick of it. So I'm feeling pretty good. I'm feeling pretty good about my team. Yeah, your team, your team scares me a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, the next question, just to let y'all know, Lonely uh, came up with the questions for this. So shout outs to him. Appreciate you for doing that. But I am going to switch up this next question just a little bit for the interview with you. Mm -hmm. I want to know 
one specific Pokemon on your team that other teams need to keep an eye out for? Just the main Pokemon that you think they need to be worried about? Uh... Um... Without giving too much away, I mean, Landorus is a massive threat. <laughs> yes. Uh, it's, it's just it's a huge part of a sand team, and it's it's incredible with or without the sand. Yeah. It doesn't matter. It's still an incredible Pokemon, regardless. Um, it's extremely strong, um, and I've built a mildly annoying Landorus, so that should be fun to deal with. Um, and I know you asked for one specific, but the other one too would also be Dracovish, because obviously it's, a, it's a, just a really strong one. Um, but I think Landers <laughs> would probably be my number one. And then Dracovish would be like a, a, a kind of a close number two behind that. But I think if I had to give one specific Pokemon, I think I'd probably say Landers. But I feel like anyone could probably guess that by looking at the team. <laughs> yeah, L Landers is scary. Luckily, we have the base form rule in the league. Yeah. So, <laughs> so no worries there with that. Uh, what is it, Therian form? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that's good for us. <laughs> Alright, do you think you have a potential MVP, MVP candidate from your team, or do you think your team will be balanced across the board with the way you were just talking about Landorus? <laughs> He's up there. Yeah, Landorus, Dracovish, um, maybe even Mamoswine. I know you, you started to use Mamoswine more effectively towards the end of your season, um, last season. Um... Mamoswine could also be a good shout, but uh, Dracovish or Lander is... I'm not, gonna, I'm not really revolving my whole team around them, but having them is just a nice, nice touch. Um, and they could definitely do some damage if they're not checked, yeah. for sure. Definitely. Um, which, again, I'm sure you could probably guess by just looking at the team. <laughs> um, but definitely those two are up there for me. Um, I think they could potentially come up big. Uh, especially maybe early or late, I'm not really sure, but certain teams I feel like they could perform really well against. Um, and yeah, I, I definitely think those two will be up there for me at least. As like a personal team MVP, for sure, I think it's probably going to be one of those two. Um, and if, if either of them are competing for this like the season MVP, I wouldn't be too surprised either. Uh, you got. You're gonna have to use Draco a little bit different than uh, Derek did if you want it to yeah. be MVP. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, do you feel that you have any underrated Pokemon on your team? Um. Uh. I mean, immediately looking at the team, probably Leafeon. Um, yeah. I don't. Yeah, I don't think many people probably would have expected that, but Leafeon is actually a surprisingly good mon. Just throwing it out there. My, fa um, my favorite evolution, by the way. <laughs> it's, not, it's not a bad one. It's really not a bad one. It, Leafeon is great. Um, I originally was kind of planning to take Rillaboom, to be honest with you, um, but obviously that got taken right before I could take it, so uh, I decided on Leafeon because it was between Leafeon and Rillaboom because I knew I wanted a Grass type. And all the other grass types I would have wanted got taken anyway, so I was like, okay, Rillaboom or Leafeon, um, and I just decided on Leafeon instead. I could, I guess you could say that got sniped, but not really, because I was literally like Leafeon or Rillaboom. Like I didn't, I wasn't really um, planning on just Rillaboom, so like it's kind of a snipe, but like not really. Um, but Leafeon definitely, I feel like on first glance is probably one of those ones that you you wouldn't expect to do anything in a match. But I got some plans. I got some plans. Alright, so you sound like you're going to be able to answer this next one pretty good. Are you confident in your ability to utilize your team to its fullest potential? Fullest potential? Maybe. <laughs> I, think I, I, think I'm, I think I'm confident in... in I think I'm backtracked confident in my ability, a little bit. A little bit, yeah. I, I, I think I can, I can get them to like 80% quickly. I think I can get to like 80% of fully, fully utilizing the team. I, I think I can get there. Um, it's just there there's things you, you don't really learn until you actually start battling So I think right now I can't really say that I'll get them to their fullest potential until I start battling and, and Using the team more and more and more to where I'm like, okay, this is the weakness so Now I need to cover it with this and this and this and this and blah 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 So right now I, I can say that I could probably get them to like 80 85 percent of full potential um, but to the fullest, we'll see. I will see when we get into battles. But I, I'm pretty confident so far uh, in understanding the team. And weather teams are usually kind of easier to use, but at the same time, 
we saw with Corbats how bad it can be when you get counted. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, there's things I need to definitely keep an eye out for. Um, and there's probably some counters that I can't even think of right now until someone uses them against me. And so, with that being said, like I, I can't say for sure right now, but I think I think I can I can definitely push them up there. There you go. Hey, I'm just curious who who uh, countered Crobats last season. <laughs> uh, Max. <laughs> oh, well, true, true. I, I did it. I did it twice though. All right. Uh, moving back to the entire league, you're in the mega division. Yes. And you're in there with, I'm going to look at it because I don't want to screw up. You're in there with Landon, the Iowa Incineroars, uh, Boost, the Everglade Entes, Derek, the Kentucky Kinglers, and Jack Nishin, the New Brunswick Ninetales. Mm. What are your thoughts when you saw who you were with? Uh, all my friends are here. <laughs> <laughs> it was just, I mean, don't get me wrong, like, pretty much everyone's league is, like, someone I know, uh, talk to regularly, things like that, but these, at least Landon, Derek, and Jack, I, they were probably the first three guys I really, like, talked to, talked to in the community, um, and then, you know, obviously Foose and I have gotten along more recently as well, um, so it's, that's why I keep calling it the friendship division because <laughs> it's just it's just it's the five of us but man power that's all I thought is I got I got some tough battlers in there um, and then yeah I was like seeing their teams as well after, after everyone got drafted I was like god this is a tough division um, which to be fair both divisions are very tough just looking at the team but uh, yeah uh, excited but I was just like oh gosh these teams <laughs> i i will say uh you got lucky because the way the teams were chosen it wasn't like rng like a roll to wheel or anything i put everyone in order one through ten and then i mm -hmm. told i literally put out the divisions after i named them and i told my wife all right pick a random number you're gonna pick all five of this division the other five are gonna go in the other one no lie she picked you jack uh derek and i'm sitting here like yeah, just give everybody their friends. <laughs> <laughs> so it, I can it, tell you right now, the recording session for those matches are probably gonna be like an hour long. <laughs> it, hey, it worked out for you, so. Yeah. All right, did seeing your division make you more excited for the season to start? You kind of answered that. <laughs> um. Yeah, it did. Um, to be able to go against these guys that I know and have known and you know especially seeing Derek and Boost last season uh, seeing what they were capable of uh, it's gonna be gonna be very interesting I can say that uh, I, I I'm, I'm yeah I'm very pumped I'm very pumped nervous especially against Foose because I keep saying that because he's my first match but I'm uh, very excited yeah very 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 excited um, to take on my, my guys in the division all right, is there anyone in your division that you would consider your rival? Um, uh, I'd probably say Landon. I mean, we did a rival lock, so I feel like he's probably the easiest, easiest answer. Um, <laughs> but I feel like Landon, he likes to talk a lot of smack. Um, <laughs> so definitely he's up there. Uh, the battle with Josh's is going to be a great, a great one to start off the season. Uh, that's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, I feel like he's my rival for that reason. Um, and then I'd say Jack is like the only one I don't really consider a rival because he's just always so nice to me. <laughs> so it's hard to consider him that. Uh, but Derek as well, I, 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 I throw him up in there because, you know, I'm going to tell him uh, I made your team. So you need to let me in. <laughs> <laughs> but above all else, I think I'd say Landon, number one. I, think. Yeah. I, I don't know if he'll say the same thing. I'm going to be mad if he doesn't, but I'm going to say Landon, number one. I like that question because it does let you know who each coach is looking at in particular. Like, I want to take down this guy. Yeah. You know, and then sure. to be able to hear everyone's answers, that's going to be cool. All right, the next one. Is there anyone in the other division that you want to face? Uh, my number one answer is probably the champ. No oh. offense, sorry, the oh. champ and you. Uh, <laughs> I it's it's a pride thing. Um, I want to face the champ at some point. That'd be great. But at the same time, I also do want to face you because we've we've talked a lot about facing each other uh, potentially this season. So. That has also gotten me hyped for potentially facing you, but 
in terms of like pride, if I was just to answer straight off for pride, I'd want to face the, the champ from last season. Um, just so I can say I beat him. Um, but it's it's between you two, definitely. It's very neck and neck. Like I said, my pride answer is the champ, but my my honest answer is you. I do want to face you at some point this season. But, hey, the only way we face each other is the championship, so I'm, yeah. cool, I'm cool with that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, looking at the entire league or each division, uh, which team from each division do you think is the most dangerous, uh, not including yours? Um, from my division, I think I could probably, I think everyone will probably agree with if I say Derek. Um, again, why did we let him have a freaking stupid team again? Um, he obviously has the MVP and the center race. Uh, he has Dialga, which is an insane mon. I mean, he's got Mimikyu again. He's got Ferrothor and Salamence. I mean, he's just got power on his team again. Um, so, and, and it's pretty tight balanced as well. So it's just a lot of power on that team alongside a lot of tight balancing. So it's just going to be really hard to take down his team and work around his team. Um, so I, I'd probably say Derek is my, my biggest fear, just on paper, just the team on paper. Um, I'd say Derek, and then from the Dynamax division, um, straight up power, I, I think I'd probably say again, you and Gwen Echo, <laughs> honestly, um, it's kind of hard because Gwen Echo has a lot of tight balance on his team as well. You have yeah. power between Carton and Excadrill. Carton is a little bit of a, of a glass cannon, but at the same time, it still hits very hard. And you have a zoom roll. Obviously, I have a Meryl right here, so I love a zoom roll. <laughs> um, and then Max as well, though. That's my thing. Is like Max, I feel like upgraded his team this season. Yes. So and he already and he was doing pretty well with a team that a lot of people were kind of underrating a bit. Yeah. Um, so for him to have a better team this season, um, I I definitely want to keep an eye out for him 110% because I'm very curious to see what he's going to do. And I'm very excited to see his matches, to be honest, because, again, he battled well with a team that people weren't really hyping up too much. And then now he has got a better team. So I'm very curious to see what he's going to do. But on paper, on paper, to, to answer the question, uh, uh, damn. Um, I'd probably say Max, honestly. Like, I feel like he's just got some power in there. He's got some bulk in there. He's got some annoying mons. Like, I feel like he, he definitely is going to come up with some nice competitive strats for, for us to have to go against. So I think I'd probably go Max in the Dynamax division, just on paper. All right, and on the flip side of that coin, are there any teams from each division that you think are being underestimated, but they could perform well? I feel like the easiest answer in Dynamax Division is probably Ace's team. Um, <laughs> that, because... me, that me out. <laughs> that me out. Yeah, that's literally one of the, like, one of, if not the only reasons why I'd pick his team. Uh, Cantonian Meowth. Uh, even Tentacruel, I've never really seen a, a competitive Tentacruel. So Tentacruel I have. Ever... I have. You have? Interesting. Yes. Okay. Um, Cramorant. He's got, he's got, what three water types yeah he's got a couple grass types like i feel like he doesn't have a, a massive amount of type coverage so uh i'd probably say the redwood meows from dynamax and from from my division i'd probably say landon <laughs> i was gonna say landon and jack because their <laughs> teams are different uh they have a lot of different mons but more so landon's i just don't know what the plan really is he keeps talking about his rest talk polyrath for some reason giving away his strategies and stuff um but uh landon like on paper yeah uh it's just i'm i'm not i i can't i obviously haven't really had the time but to to look at his team and just automatically think of a strategy i, I haven't really been able to really come up with anything yet so um at least for him like in terms of what he's gonna do uh, so I I'd say probably Jack has more 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 powerful Pokemon on his team. Yeah. Um, and there must have been a reason he chose Cryogonal first, so you gotta trust that as well. Um, so yeah, I think Landon's team just it's kind of weird. Like some of those Pokemon, I was just kind of like okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I, I'm very curious. I think I'm more so curious of just what he's gonna do with his team. All right, and we are gonna bring this question back from the last season to end off our interview why are you going to be the ebl champion at the end of the season um 
why do I have to be on on this side this time around? <laughs> I made this question hard for a reason. <laughs> um, honestly, I think it's just gonna be a lot of uh, grinding uh, my wins out. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna practice a lot. I'm gonna really put a lot into this to try and get some wins out there. Um, but I'm just, I'm just gonna really try. I think that's, I think that's the most honest answer I can give is that I'm gonna really try. We're gonna try our best. Um, and if our best means we don't even make it to the playoffs and you know what, I could comfortably say that I tried my best. Yeah. Um, and I think that's, that's the most honest answer I can give is that I'm just gonna try my hardest, um, to, to make sure I end up at least to a later part of the season, meaning playoffs. So I'm just gonna try my best. <laughs> Hey, that's all you can do. Uh, the only way to get there is to attempt it. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Our preseason interview with the coach of the LA Inferno, uh, Lonely Hermit. Be sure to show some love his way alongside with all the other coaches of the Elite Battle League. I wish good luck for you this season, and we'll be seeing you real soon for season two. This is the end if you would like to take a second to tell the people anything you got going on. Uh, right now, by the time this interview coming out, we'll be done with Ultra Sun. So this week we'll be kicking off our Sword Nuzlocke, which is the final step in our Gen Sweep, Gen 8. Finally, we're at the final generation. Uh, so that's going to be kicking off this week. Uh, weekly roundups, hopefully by the time this video is coming out, the preseason roundup should be coming out relatively soon. Haven't recorded it yet. I need to get in touch with Timmy, but uh, the preseason roundup should be coming soon for the EBL. Um, and obviously keeping out for LA Inferno's performances that every Saturday, every Saturday we'll be having a match. So get hype and support the team. Merch will be coming soon for the team as well. So, uh, get excited. I'm super pumped for the season to start, like super, 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 super pumped for the season to start. So definitely keeping out for LA Inferno's performance in season two. All right, guys, so that's going to be the end of this interview. Hope you all have a great day, and we will see you come season two, week one on October 2nd. And I guess I'm going to close it out since I was the one doing the interview. So until next time, guys, I'm going to use my outro later. <laughs>